Welcome to the program. Uh, we want to start off uh, by kind of recapping the origins and the goals of this conference. And uh, so let me just say to start, uh, what really concerned us was the fact that people without medical training were telling us how to practice medicine. And so this conference doesn't have a political agenda, it's a professional agenda. And that is that you know, people who train seven or more years to do this job, that there's a reason for that, and that uh, their voice should be heard in, in how that profession is conducted. So we invite all physicians, and uh, there are many other experts that have joined us uh, from other associated fields, and we really appreciate their input as well. Uh, but we want to hear what physicians think about the practice of medicine. And uh, we don't limit in any way uh, what they are saying. Uh, their political, whatever political bent they bring is fine. Uh, but we want everyone to know that the, the summit itself is a neutral platform in that regard. So we just hope a lot of great ideas will be presented, and we know they will. They already have been. And uh, we've got a great lineup today, and um, may the best ideas uh, win for the good of all. Panel, do you have anything to add at this point? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to share some thoughts. I think, first of all, it's been a fabulous four days. I think there's something um, really worthwhile in getting together with physician colleagues outside maybe a structured medical conference, but just to do this, to, it creates some bonding, and I think the medical profession needs some bonding. But beyond the specific ideas we've heard in the last four to five days, I try to kind of take the you know, bird's eye view, the wide angle view. Are there some common themes? Are there some core things that are resonating with physicians across the country? And so I took the liberty to jot down what I, struck me, and you might have some of your own, but these are just mine and I'd like to share them if that's okay. Um, one, we're all here because I think of prime importance is the sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship, and that should never be violated. And for those of you outside medicine, you know, as physicians, let me just tell you, we take that to heart, and um, that is of prime importance to us. And realize some of your actions on a national level whether they be mandates or legislative actions, are interfering with that relationship we hold most dear. Number two, as physicians and as a medical profession, we need to move from complaining to action at every level, in our practices, at our hospitals, in our communities, and at the national level. Number three, don't let others define you. Restore the joy to your practice of medicine. And number four, I would say, there's strength and unity, and we need to be united in our ideas and speak with one voice as physicians and for our entire medical profession. So those are just some of the kind of broad things that hit me this week. Um, so, okay, thank yeah. you, Dan. Sure. Judy? Well, I'm like Dan, um, I, I think I try to look at things from a bird's eye view. Personally, I'm fascinated with human behavior, and um, what we're a part of here is a revolution. I think we're all aware of that. And there's been this overarching question, both statement and question, and that is, um, one, we all know this, that if we would bind together and speak in a unified voice, we could address and probably even rectify many of the problems that we're talking about uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but there's something that uh, keeps us from doing that. Um, Dr. Kurachek was, uh, I, I was just really impressed with his first presentation where he just uh, reassured all of us as listeners that we're smart enough to do this. We are the masters of our own fate. As I've watched the presentations and uh, prepared for my role as a moderator, I've already said this once, but I think it's worth saying again, um, I ask myself, what's the difference between 
uh, people who um, have taken action and those who have not. And um, a common thread became visible to me. And that thread was that um, the people who have taken action were just in the process of doing what we do on a day-to-day -day basis when a question entered their mind. And I think that, that the question that entered their mind is a question that enters all of our minds as practicing physicians, and that is, what am I doing? And I'm talking right now about the extra busy work that we do, the bureaucratic work that Dr. Et, uh, talked about. Um, many, many of us let that question just pass right through our mind and we remain diligent and stay on the grist mill and we keep working. But for the people who've taken action, it appeared to me that they let that question stop in their mind. And, and then they began to ask, answer, generate an answer for the question. And then, very impressively to me, uh, Dr. Tierstein, Beth Haynes, other individuals began to gather evidence, Rocky Billharts, um, to validate the answer to their question. And by gathering that evidence, Dr. Tierstein went so far, and Beth also talked about this yesterday, to consider the validity of the evidence. I, I was just very, very impressed by that. But in, in, as they gathered that knowledge, they developed a fund of knowledge, they became empowered with that knowledge, and it was my perception by watching that that knowledge led to action. And, and uh, as I listen to these speakers, I'm struck, and this thought crosses my mind, that these people appear to me to be masters of their knowledge. Take them to the table. Debate them. You're going to learn something. Not to say one's right or wrong, but you are going to learn something by engaging with these individuals. So I think it's been a really um, special and unique opportunity for all of us to come together this week. If you haven't watched the earlier presentations, I would encourage you to do so because these are people who have spent a lot of time. They've done a lot of work. They put their heart, soul, professional skill into collecting this knowledge, determining the validity of, of the knowledge, putting it into a presentation, and then getting it here to us. That was a lot of work. And that knowledge is going to empower all of us, hopefully begin to tie us together. You know, we came together as this size group. I hope that we leave as a little bit of a larger group. I think that we will. And then one, of the, one, one last thing. What I wanted when we discussed this early on um, uh, to come from this summit is I wanted physicians to have a seat at the table whether it's maintenance of certification, electronic health records, whatever the case may be. We must at least be at the table. Our mere presence will change how other human beings, especially non-physicians, think. And if we have the courage to speak up, we'll be educating them, and it will absolutely change what they do. And when that changes, our lives begin to change, and we begin to return ourselves to the center of medicine rather than the periphery of medicine, and we become the masters of our own fate. So thank you for the opportunity to say what I think. Very well said. You're, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to say uh, thanks to all our terrific speakers and participants. Uh, we've got representatives of many major medical organizations here, and we thank you so much for coming and participating and bringing your organization's uh, messages to this table. Um, one of the things we've talked about is, is the need or possibly the, the benefit of assembling a majority of physicians uh, to speak on one or more topics. In terms of uh, organizational membership being added together to form coalitions on specific issues. So uh, None of the great organizations here have a majority of physicians as members at this point. And so I think that says that we need to collaborate on certain issues if we're going to, going to really be effective. And we hope that we can find one or more issues such as EHR meaningful use problems, such as uh, uh, ICD-10 issues that we can agree on and get some 
uh, definitive action in the near future on. And even if we can just do that on one topic, get some real relief for physicians on one topic and give them some breathing room to focus on taking care of their patients instead of complying with mandates, I think that will be a real victory and hopefully a model for us to achieve action on other issues. So for instance, we have an EHR resolution and uh, you can click from either the live web stream page or our, our website to look at those, sign them if you like. Some of them are on wikidoc.org if you want to edit them and, and hopefully improve them. And we invite you to submit your own. Uh, but the AMA held a national town hall event by webcast on Monday calling for a moratorium on stage three implementation of meaningful use. And we uh, applaud and support that effort. The National Nurses United, the largest nurses union, has called for a similar moratorium and we call for that. So. Uh, again, there's just one example. Um, ICD-10, I believe, is another issue the AMA is, is calling for a delay and further uh, examination by practicing physicians. And again, we support that and, and hope we can uh, assemble the kind of numbers that are needed to have some definitive action take place uh, sooner rather than later. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, breakout rooms. In the area, I want to let uh, speakers and anyone here know about those. Uh, if we have an interesting conversation going on, uh, maybe in the Q&A after a, a presentation, and we've got to move on to our next speaker, if you want to continue that conversation, get with our team in the back, and they will uh, get you to one of those rooms where you can have that conversation. You can uh, film and record it if you like. Uh, maybe you can come up with a new resolution or, or something else that will <clears throat> will add to the conference. Um, and while I'm talking about the team back there, I just want to let you know what a fabulous production team we have, led by Andrea Berry of Amber Agency, and we just want to thank them for yeah. just a tremendous job. Um, also want to say that we've opened up the webcast to the public today and tomorrow. Uh, so. We certainly want anyone around the country who's interested in these issues to uh, weigh in, see what's been going on. You can All of the uh, material since Monday is on demand, uh, available for viewing. The live stream, you can comment, and we'd certainly love to hear from you. Uh, panel, anything else? Um, yeah. So I just want to echo Judy's words, um, just a deep felt thank you to all of you who are attending live and in person for those of you who have presented here um, and for your activism for your courage for your deep felt passion in for our medical profession for the years of hard work that you've all gone through college and medical school and residency and in your practice for the stick to attitude you all have um, you certainly energize me and you certainly uh, make me want to do more. So I just want to say that thank you to everyone. We're kind of a club here. We really are. And we need to find a way to kind of unite together. On top of that, I just want to share something about this guy that he doesn't know I'm going to do. On, um, on Monday, if you didn't listen to me, I was, went through a story, which I'm not going to go through again, how Mike and I met. But I said to the audience, you know, I'm going to say something, and it's a compliment to him. And I said, Dr. Strickland, you are a pit bull in every good sense of the word, because once he feels like he's on the right side of something, and once he's passionate about something, he just doesn't, doesn't let go. And Michael, this would have never happened but for your sheer determination to make it happen, for your willingness to improve the medical profession, for your great thoughtfulness that we need something to bring us together. And uh, this was a guy who flew his plane all over the country to go person to person to invite him to this. And I just want, in a public way, everyone to know that. So I so appreciate you, and I appreciate everything you've done here. This wouldn't have happened but, it, but for Dr. Strickland's um, efforts and energy. So thank you. Thank you, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, Okay, well, uh, I want to 
again ask doctors around the country to uh, please web in and participate. You know, we all talk to doctors all the time, our colleagues, and we all hear the same problems, concerns, and uh, just want to tell you, all you have to do is speak up about it. You know, if, if 10,000 doctors, 50,000 doctors, 100,000 would speak up and say what they have to say on, on these issues, that's all you have to do. Uh, people will listen to physicians if we speak with one voice about the subject of medicine. Judy? Yeah, I have a couple of things I want to say. Um, as we've been going through the summit, um, I have started a list of actionable items. Um, it's not complete, but it's a list of actionable items. If, and if there's anybody who, as you're headed back to your daily routine and your practice, want to know, what can I do today that will take the ball forward in this process, um, let me know and I'll be happy to share that with you. And I'll probably even get together with Andrea between now and the end of the conference and we can put that on the website so that, you know, once again, you don't have to generate a novel thought. You can simply follow uh, the wonderful leaders who've done the work and uh, have shown us the way. The other thing I want to do is um, uh, introduce Dr. Lisa Chu, who I think almost everybody here has met, uh, but for the web audience. Uh, Lisa is a very interesting person. And um, she is a Harvard graduate. And she is a graduate of a very well-respected medical school. And once she completed medical school, she realized um, that it was uh, not the right place for her to be. And she's uh, grown into a successful entrepreneur. And uh, part of that um, entrepreneurship it has grown into uh, counseling physicians who are faced with disappointment any one of a number of ways. So she and I met online, and um, I um, ultimately uh, asked the steering committee if she could come. And from my point of view, she's here for a very specific reason. Uh, those of us who are here, you know, we're learning from each other, you know, about the history and the facts of where we are and so on and so forth. But I believe that if we're going to move into a new place, um, we need to open our minds and begin to see things in a new way. And that can be very challenging, especially when you're tired, disappointed, stressed, overworked, underslept, whatever the case may be. Personally, I find it really challenging under those circumstances to open my mind and see things a new way. So part of Lisa's role here is to help identify when we, using our own thoughts and words, are painting ourselves into our traditional box that maybe has led us to where we are and maybe to help us begin to see a new way of perceiving things, thinking things, and saying things so that we'll step out of this conference and take a whole new idea with us. The other thing that's very exciting for me and Lisa and hopefully the rest of you is that we're all getting together. I think maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time in history that this group of people comes together and sits together and has a meal and shares their story with each other. And as we uh, talk with each other and share our stories, our, our, our brains are touched and we grow and we get new ideas. And this is this let my doctor practice movement, call it what you want, but the, but the healthcare revolution gaining some momentum and moving forward. So as Lisa migrates around us and listens to us and offers her interjection, uh, I would um, ask you, especially if you're a very conventional and traditional person, uh, please take no offense. Her role here is to help um, open our minds and see things in a new way so that, um, once again, we can move ourselves from the periphery into the center of medicine. Thank you very much, Lisa. She's done a tremendous amount of work. All of this freehand, as we've been working, she's kept up with our thoughts. She's helped helped us when, when we get stuck in these little um, sessions, uh, Lisa, what do I say now? And she'll throw something in the pond and keep us going. So really appreciate what you've brought to yeah, the summit. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay. I um, wanted to <clears throat> let everyone know there's a list of participating organizations on our website, letmydoctorpractice.org. I invite you to look at those. and. Uh, and uh, go to their websites and 
learn something about what they're doing, and uh, many of their representatives are, and leaders are here. Um, wanted to ask uh, the viewers to consider uh, donating and supporting this effort financially. Uh, as you know, it takes a you know, tremendous amount of money and time and effort to do this, and uh, we certainly need your support. Um, I wanted to say also I'd ask doctors on the webcast around the country to speak up and, uh, and uh, add your voice. And I want to ask those who are here in person, uh, the, the live event really wasn't scheduled to kick off till this afternoon, but we greatly appreciate those of you who have come in early and we're, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, you can follow the webcast from your device wherever you are. The uh, Wi-Fi password here is UPSA2015. Um, or uh, we're going to have a microphone. Now that may not be scheduled till uh, tomorrow. But we're going to ask everyone here in person yeah. who wants to to come up to that microphone and and say what they have to say. And uh, maybe we could even set it up earlier today. Um, but if not, we have a comment, question, anything. Feel free to raise your hand. Just shout it out. And that was just to clarify. Tomorrow, Saturday is when we're going to do the open mic. Correct, Andrea. So today we could do that too. Okay, so just to clarify that. Is um, that mic up right now, Andrea? Right, so just raise your hand if you have something we want to say. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. Anybody want to help us kick the morning off? And while you're thinking about it, I just wanted to um, pick up on that. Um, what you were talking about, Judy, that um, there's many of my physician colleagues, and I want to word, word this and without being too harsh, but um, my own experience is, is I realized in a moment that I need to go from a complaining doctor to one of action. And that is hard to um, put in the words what caused that. But I just realized that, you know, if you're unhappy and you're complaining about things, you know, I just, I'm telling you, I'm a surgeon, and I hear it at the scrub sink, and you'll hear it in my talk tomorrow, but I'm just kind of tired of the complaining and not people doing anything about it. And so whatever that is, that, that's what medicine needs, in my humble opinion, to go from complaining to the next step. And to do that, to go from complaining to the next step, whatever that looks like for you, and it's going to look different for all of us. You might be the person who just take some action in your own practice or at your hospital, but whatever that is, that next step has to occur for us to achieve the goals that we want. And I really feel strongly about that. That, that is a critical next step. And sadly, again, my own humble opinion, if the medical profession cannot do that, then I really worry about the viability and the longevity of having a voice in healthcare. Um, so some of you may disagree with that. I feel that passionately and from the heart, so I wanted to share that. You know, as several people here have pointed out to me, um, a lot of times we like to complain that someone else is doing something to us, and I've certainly been there many, many times. Uh, the insurance company, the EHR, the government is doing this to us. And, you know, they point out that we're allowing this to be done to us. Uh, so we have to take uh, responsibility for that. And uh, if I got it right, I heard, and Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the kind of three steps in this issue. If you have a change or pressure that's being exerted on you and you, uh, you don't feel that's correct or... Um, or, you're, or, it's, or it's causing you a problem, you have choices. You can either change and adapt to that, or if you find that you cannot, then you have to step outside of that and put a boundary between that and the new path that you take. So uh, again, we have to really realize and be honest with ourselves that we do have choices and we can do something different. The question is, are we going to? And I, before Judy responds, I just want to say, um, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here because everyone in this room <laughs> has done that and probably before I started doing it. So that message 
is not for you or even if you're in the audience listening to us, but it's kind of a, um, I guess, a motivational kind of thought for maybe our physician colleagues who aren't doing that, to think about doing that. And maybe not everyone can do that, and that's okay. But I would challenge you, um, if that's in your heart, to think about doing that. It'll open up opportunities. Um, it'll expand your mind. You'll meet new people, relationships that you wouldn't have before. And all that is good, right? We can all be stretched. I can do things different. I think sometimes we need to take a step back out of where we are in our own role, lose your identity for a moment, and look at the big picture. So, yeah. So, um, Dr. Cavalli, in your recorded presentation that we played a couple of days ago, you uh, had a list of actionable items, but one of them uh, that really spoke to me uh, was that you take steps to reach out and assist other physicians who are trying to adapt, survive, transition, whatever the case may be. Um, I'd love to hear more about how you do that, but I um, have definitely added that to my personal list of actionable items. I know a number of physicians in my community who are on the springboard getting ready to jump into direct to practice care. When I get home, I'm going to call them. And I'm going to give them all the encouragement that I can. I'm going to direct them to the information in this summit, you know, whatever way I can support them. Um, in our last minute and 30 seconds, I cannot take enough time to thank the silent soldiers in our lives, mm -hmm. uh, our family members, and our friends who have graciously allowed us if you will, to spend less time with them. They've supported us, they've listened to us, they've fed us, they've lived with less money because we put it somewhere else. Um, and you guys know that, your, your friends and family members have done the same and um, without those people, once again, uh, this would not be happening. So to those of you whose shoulders we stand on, um, I thank you, heartfelt. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, now we'll turn it back over to Dr. Wax. And Dr. Wax, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you Craig. Panel. You've done yeah. an excellent job. And uh, we, do, we do appreciate uh, uh, your support, the support of other physicians and the silent soldiers, as you mentioned, our families who are at home holding down the fort, children, and uh, doing with less so that we can apply ourselves to educating physicians and the community at large to try to change the practice of medicine toward, toward the more ideal. We definitely appreciate that.